whenever I do a talk, I always bring something with me. This is the cover, but it's my gold mic. Oh, it's your gold <laughs> mic. <laughs> well, you must be a famous rapper. <laughs> Straight hip hop player. <laughs> Here we go. So I'm here in Slovenia in the capital of Ljubljana and uh, the reason I came out here is something I wanted to tell you guys about. Um, they brought me out here for an entrepreneurial summit but it's a very unique type of summit. It is for high school students. So one of the challenges that is in this nation is that there's a high youth unemployment rate. There's about 25 percent youth unemployment rate and those that are employed are either underemployed and there's actually a lot of people that have left the country. And so what's happened here is there's a, a, an entrepreneur named Mattia who invited me here to come and speak to these kids and he's put together a program that's nationwide and they're in every high school across the nation um, and their entrepreneurship club and so after school kids go to this club they learn about the skills that it takes but they quickly move into prototyping and creating a business and going to sell something some product or service now 500 teams across the nation have basically put together these businesses they're not really plans as much as they are here's what I'm doing and there's a semi-final that's happening today of this of the 500 teams there's 16 teams that they've narrowed it down to and they're gonna select five, maybe six teams um, throughout Slovenia, as well as some other countries. I believe Hungary is involved as well now. Um, and they're going to select about five or six different businesses after that with, and through like a pitch day. And so I'll be delivering the commencement address for them. Now, here's why this is really important for me, why I came here. Um, first of all, it's an amazing opportunity to get to see a new country that I've never been to. And the people here have been amazing. But really, the one reason I wanted to come here is because I was a high school entrepreneur. I understand a lot of what these kids are going through. I understand the mindset and I understand that it feels like you have the world of opportunity and yet it's also kind of complicated. It's not so easy just to be like, well, I'm going to go do this business. There's, there's a lot of, um, I think, glory that comes with being an entrepreneur in terms of like what the headlines say, but the truth of the matter is it's really hard work. And so what I'm hoping to deliver these kids today is the kind of kick in the ass, the inspiration, but also the dose of reality that they're going to need to really gut check themselves and say, do I want this bad enough? Because as we all know, I've said this time and time again, entrepreneurship isn't just about creating a business and it explodes. Loading. It is a grind. It is work. It is a ton of grit. And there are a lot of elements that have to conspire together to make this worthwhile of an effort. And so I'm hoping to deliver that to these kids today and overall then create the type of foundation and the inspiration for these kids that leads to them building these skills and taking care of the opportunities or taking advantage of the opportunities that they have in order to then become entrepreneurs and not be one of those statistics that's unemployed as youth. So as we go throughout the day here, I'm really hoping to show you the journey, um, the path that these kids are on, but also to be able to relate to them. And hopefully I give them some inspiration and uh, join us for the rest of the day here. So we're actually here in this cool area, it's called Tabashna. Tabashna is basically the word tobacco translated, and it's an operating tobacco plant. I think it's government controlled, but there's a small part of the campus that still packs the, the tobacco and basically makes the cigarettes. But the rest of the campus has been converted into different types of offices. So we're actually hosting this event here. Now what's interesting is that it wasn't actually here to begin with. It was actually going to be held at the presidential palace, uh, which sounded amazing. And there was the president of the country who's going to be here. Um, just yesterday, there was a big announcement that there was a border dispute that has been settled. I think there's some controversy around it, but settled between Slovenia and Croatia. And so these new borders getting drawn, the arbitration being completed. Now you've got a lot of people kind of having to figure out what they're going to do um, in terms of how they're going to uh, really say, like, how they're going to enforce this. And so um, what's happened is the presidential palace is off limits. The president's not coming anymore, so they had to quickly shift over here. So here we're at this pretty amazing campus. Um, everything here has been like, I mean, really, it's like quite beautiful. Um, and so this is kind of interesting to see like the, the old world of, you know, pre this regime, right? The, the Yugoslavia, this is this plant is about 150 years old. Um, it's pretty interesting to see like how they've converted it and, and created a, a different kind of purpose for it, um, which I love. I love to see that. So kind of interesting. So we'll kind of take a look around there and, uh, and find our spot.
up? Yeah, so where are we going? Come with me. Shit. Yeah. So it is How back are you? here. Good. How you doing? The, the co-working space is downstairs, but this is more like a startup incubator? Yeah, something like that. They, are, uh, they rent out offices to different bunch of uh, tech and uh, mostly tech uh, companies. Oh, so okay. they deal with yeah, okay. uh, prediction, uh, there are some sports uh, startup, uh, yeah. some social, uh, social ventures. Mm -hmm. We are one of them. Right. So. Yeah, did, okay. I get, did I get relegated to uh, yeah. crates? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. What's the guy's name? No, no, no. Andy, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Which area do you mentor in? Like, which city? In, in Ljubljana? Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Nice. Do you have a business here, too? Yeah, of course. Yeah. What's your business? Multiple. Multiple? Yeah. Do tell. Computers in IT. Okay. So, I mean... Founded a company 15 years ago. Hmm. Um, grew to 120 people. Uh -huh. Got merchant of bigger company. Oh, cool. Um, and basically, out of that, uh -huh. I started creating sort of curiosity, which is a concept of creating a new smart company. So basically, starting uh, sort of investing. In this, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Or on the other side, uh, trying out you know 50 different ideas in one year, and you know. Really? Yeah. yeah. And then actually out of that, That's you, know, awesome. you, you test the traction, you can see the Yeah, right, and right. You, then you start to put... Then you put, assemble the team, then you, yeah. then you speed them up. The there's, a, there's a company out in, um, you know Boulder, Boulder, Colorado? Uh, that's where I met Matia, actually. There's a company called Boulder Bits. Have you heard of this company? I think I did, yeah. Boulder Bits, it might be similar. What they do is basically incubate ideas. They see what gets traction, and then they form the teams and put some investment behind it, and I think they take an equity that's, cut. Uh, yeah, similar. That's a similar thing, yeah. Cool. Just that, so we're now trying out different models. So either there's a, maybe an entrepreneur that has an idea and wants, yeah. just doesn't have the team, doesn't have right. the support. Oh, okay. Maybe doesn't have the financial so means to actually just. Which is more a traditional yeah. way of incubating. Yeah. 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 Right. Then the other option is that you just you know, either assemble the team. Assemble the team. Yeah. Get to the idea yourself. Sweet man. Um, I know you're all nervous. Two or nine. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, give it uh, only the Cool. Okay, and now a big, big applause for Mattia. In consideration for all the uh, foreign guests today, I'm also going to open this in English. Um, uh, we're going to do all the official, you know, tie and suit thing in the final thing, so I'm not really going to go, do anything other than basically say congratulations. You guys being here today, shows that you've been working really hard this year to complete your dreams. What you have done is you have turned a hobby into a business. And I have absolutely no doubt that whatever you do from this point on in your lives, you are gonna be successful because of this experience. Entrepreneur and mentor to young entrepreneurs and pro-curator of Avantcar and the rep representative of Tesla in Slovenia. And uh, Andy Seth. Yes. <laughs> Who is running Flow, a social company that helps young people from vulnerable groups gain sales skills. He began his career as a DJ in Los Angeles and is now serving as the president of one of the largest private universities in the United States, KIPP. Uh, Andy will now also give us a keynote address in which I hope he'll showcase his DJ skills. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Seth! Yeah, what's going on, everybody? I am super excited to be here, and I traveled all the way from Denver, Colorado, because I wanted to give you guys a specific message, especially because you're in this really critical phase of transitioning from high school or, or going through high school and then getting to college. I actually started my entrepreneurial career in high school. And so I felt like what you guys are going through, I've felt, I've been there. And there's a few things I wanted to be able to share with you. I went to high school that I was very fortunate and blessed to go to. It's called Culver Military Academy. It's a military school in Indiana. I still wear my ring today. Imagine where I came from in LA, 
super diverse, I mean, socioeconomically, right, lower class, I'm not white. I go to a military school in Indiana. Socioeconomically, that is a wealthy school, 25,000 US a year back in 93. Demographically, almost entirely white. Geographically, I'm placed out of LA into Indiana. That couldn't be more different. So you see all these things that really conspired and I left my family. I moved out when I was 13. Think about that. Four things right off the bat that are so different and life-changing. Imagine the shock that I had when I went there. When I got there, I realized like, man, these kids are, these kids are like smarter than me. Their parents are like on a whole different level. I mean, there's just all this stuff going through my head, like basically bad talk, you know, just bad invisible scripts that were running through my head. So I went to my commandant and I said, these words, I said, I don't feel like I belong here. And he said to me, Seth, it's true. You don't walk in here with your parents' names, your father or your mother's names known. So you're not going to get people's respect because of that. You've got to earn it. And the way you're going to earn that respect is to beat them. Beat them academically, beat them athletically, beat them militarily. When you beat them, you earn their respect. And that resonated with me because I was like, that's something I can control. I won't, I'll skip through all the four years of things that I did, but I'll tell you how I graduated. I graduated cum laude, which was one of the top of my class, probably top five. I graduated the second highest rank in the military, the squadron commander. And I graduated a three athlete, three, three sport varsity athlete, all four years. So that's how I ended my academic career at Culver. But how it started was I didn't feel like I belonged. By the time I ended, not only did I belong, I realized I was leading everybody else. And so what's really important through that process was to realize what I'm actually made of. I'm made of grit. I'm made of steel. I'm made of some strong material. I'm not soft. But when I started realizing that, it started to affect how I became an entrepreneur. Because as an entrepreneur, you can't be soft. In here, everybody's happy for you. Out there, nobody gives a shit. I don't care. If you're coming after my business, I'm coming after you hard. And that's what it's like out there, right? Now, that said, you got to put yourself through the metal. You got to see what you're made of. And so if you're getting soft right now, if you feel like maybe I don't have it, that's OK. I didn't know if I did either. What I'm telling you is put yourself in positions where you got to find out what you're really made of. Put yourself through the grind. Put yourself through the ringer. See what you've got. Because if you don't have what it is, and that's OK, you just need to know. But if you've got it, you'll know that you can summon it at any given time. So the last thing I wish for you guys is this. First of all, congratulations on being here, on making it this far. I'm stoked for you. I cannot wait to see what you guys do. And all I ask is this. Ask yourself, what are you made of? Thank you. Let's give a big round of applause for Tony Our foggy technologies. We built a shield that takes your data, encrypts it, and so no one else can read it and sends it on. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it a shield, but I would call it more fog. What it does, it just grabs your data, scrambles it, and on the other side, you scramble it, you scrambles it, thus preventing anyone in between from reading it. I got a few questions. Uh, I'm going to boil one. Um, have you tried to sell this? How many have you sold if you have? Uh, at what price did you sell it? And how many people did you talk to in order to sell it? I, um, I, I, I did an experiment when it came to data theft. And I went online on Facebook under a fake name and I asked a lot of people, have they ever had this problem? And there I was able to promote this product. And I think I did it to around 10,000 people. And it was, it, it was a good feedback. A lot of people liked it. Um, and I also did present it to many businesses, and I'm, since I'm still working on fixing a couple kinks in it, none of the businesses actually have them right now. But within the next, within the next month or two, uh, I'll, I want to see if I can at least get ten, ten businesses here in Sylvania to have them. One of them is already on the way. Two hundred and fifty thousand. This is the number of searches for the word photographer every single day 
in East and Central Europe. I was one of them when I tried to organize my birthday party. Hello everyone, my name is Shari Volom, the general manager of Photon. I spent hours of it searching, but I couldn't find anyone, despite the fact that I am a photographer. It's hard to compare them because they are not sharing the most relevant information about their services. Building on this experience, we came up with an idea about creating an online platform where people can save time, find and pick the best photographer for any event effortlessly. Slovenians are known for our hospitality. And if you visit somebody in Slovenia, we will offer you sleepers. That's the considerate thing to do. Now let me tell you a story about my stepdad, Tone. He doesn't have that chance because he's on the wheelchair. Imagine your life that whenever it is a bad weather, you cannot go out of your house because you cannot take off the tires on wheelchair. Seeing my stepdad always looking out when it rains, we wanted to make a change. And that's why we created a product called Sumpatki. All right. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm around now. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're not, we're not. There it is, guys. Well, it's been another year, so let's talk for about 20 minutes before I announce this. No, just <laughs> Apart from that, that everyone here was a winner because it's kind of scary to step on this stage, being a winner of this competition usually in the past have meant that people are going to achieve really, really great things. Either because their current vision is already amazing, or because the potential that's been shown here today means that great things are about to happen. I think the winner this time really exemplifies that. Well, the best youth startup 2017 from Usparialnik is Tsopatki. What an incredible day. We just wrapped up with the whole business plan and, and the business pitch competition. Um, and I got to be a judge, which was super cool. I was unexpected, but there were four of us that got to hear all the pitches. And we then selected the final uh, company that won. Now, I'll tell you what, it was actually a really difficult uh, decision. There were two companies in particular that were basically neck and neck. And the one that won, I feel, is a, is a great choice. They were all a great choice, but the one that won really got to my heart a little bit more, and that was because it's a social venture. Um, and basically what this, what this girl did was her stepfather is in a wheelchair, and it's custom in Slovenia to offer your guests when they come to your home these slippers. And her father can't go to someone's home and get these slippers, and, and the wheels are dirty, and so he doesn't go out. And to solve that, she designed wheel covers for wheelchairs. I mean, seriously, it couldn't be more simple and it couldn't be more brilliant and it couldn't have a greater cause to it. And so that's got a universal applicability. If you think about it, anybody in a wheelchair would like these covers so that they keep their own house clean. So I'm feeling really great. My heart is full. I think I got to come here, deliver my message. It was really well received. I'm super stoked about that. And also to be able to be part of something so meaningful in this country, uh, I look forward to hearing about more opportunities and seeing how I can be of help. Uh, certainly plenty of things that we've identified. And so I hope you guys have also watched this and, and seen here's what is happening around the world, not just what's happening in America, but around the world there are entrepreneurs growing and they're solving real problems, real social issues. And this isn't just a challenge for us, this is a global challenge. And so I challenge you to look at these things and say, what can I do to make a difference? And I will be asking you guys, I will be telling you, here's what we're trying to do in Slovenia. And I'll be making a call to action. So that's coming. But I hope you guys are inspired just as much as I am. I had a phenomenal time. Now I get to chill, have the rest of the week, and enjoy myself. And uh, with that, I leave it to you guys. Take care. <laughs>